This is Ami Baramchi and here's the tutorial about Terralang's latest feature, the Runtime API. As you know, Terralang contains of multiple components to generate photorealistic trains from any part of the earth using height maps and satellite images. These trains can be edited in Unity Game Engine to become your game world. Runtime API in Terralang can generate infinite worlds around the player and the system is designed to intelligently stream unlimited amount of data and fit them into the scene as the player travels around the globe. The API gives the users maximum flexibility to set up the parameters based on their desired platform from mobiles to desktops. The runtime features gives you the ability to travel from a starting point on Earth to any desired location whether it is just a few meters away or thousands of kilometers. Players can travel to any place while trains will be generated around the player dynamically and everything in the scene is going to be generated procedurally during the gameplay. S3 servers feed elevation and satellite imagery into the runtime engine and turn line converts data into 3D on the fly. The whole system is designed for real-time rendering of generating worlds as the system is so flexible to adjust for various quality and performance settings which can be set up for any target platform including mobiles by adjusting different parameters of height map and imagery resolution, multi-threading functions, concurrent tasks, operation delays and etc. Terraland Runtime API comes with a demo called World Explorer which in this demo almost all APS features are exposed in the menus. You can tweak these settings to set up desired performance and quality values based on your target platform. I'm going to explain each option in the settings to get you started. Here's the home screen of the World Explorer demo as you first run it up. In this window you define the starting point of the generating world in the game or simulation. The starting location can be defined by whether inserting any location name or address in the first field in here or by inserting the latitude and longitude coordinates of the desired geographical points. The geo coordinates have to be in the decimal degrees format. Pressing the play button will get you to the generating world to dynamically travel to any location on earth by an airplane. Pressing each section panel on settings will get you through options to set up the world explorer engine. Now I'm going to head over to each settings menu and explain the parameters in there. Here's the main settings menu which covers most of the important parameters of the runtime system. Grid size for train tiles which will be stitched together to create a similar surface. Here's the active high resolution area size in kilometers around the player. The elevation or height map resolution for the entire train chunk surface. The satellite imagery resolution for each train chunk. Here's the smoothness steps value for train surface in order to remove jaggies and bendings. By default this value is set to zero which means no smoothing operations will be applied to avoid extra performance overheads. The elevation exaggeration for the heights in vertical axis which raises or lowers total train heights. Here you can toggle far trains on and off. Far trains help the scene to cover far viewing distances at horizon level and fill up the scene where there are no main trains available. The elevation or height map resolution for the far train surface. The 
the satellite imagery resolution for the far train. This value will be multiplied by the main area size to define lower resolution far train's area size. Pressing the default button in here will revert back all settings to the default states. Pressing the back button will get you to the home screen to play the simulation. In the advanced settings menu, you can define a number of exposed parameters of the runtime API. Bypass satellite imagery downloading and only perform elevation generation. Bypass trading and coroutines operations for faster scene loading only on initialization. Show train tiles after the heights are completely generated on surface. Progressive texturing of train chunks as soon as the satellite images are downloaded. A spiral form for updating train chunks in generation and a startup. Perform LOD calculation on trains with a delay to finalize train data applying. How many meters background trains have to be placed underneath main trains? Enable or disable train tiles stitching operation to create a seamless surface. A smoothness factor for trains stitching operation. Velocity of the train tiles stitching operation. The delay in seconds to perform each stitching operation between tiles. Distance in meters between each train tiles to perform stitching. In the performance settings menu, there are some core features to be set up in order to gain optimal performance out of the simulation. Surface quality and pixel error of main train's heights. The surface quality and pixel error of background far train's heights. The concurrent task value for updating trains. The delay in seconds to update each data cell in train chunks. The delay in seconds between each train tile texturing. The resolution of each data cell in a single train tile to be applied on curtains. Here is the graphics menu which covers the presence of additional graphical elements and their settings. Here you can toggle on and off volumetric lighting and sun rays. Toggle on and off atmospheric scattering and volumetric fog. Enable or disable train detail textures for better close-up views. Enable or disable volumetric rendered clouds. Enable or disable project in cloud shadows. In the end, no matter how small the area is or satellite images are in very high resolution, you will always lose details at close viewing distances. However, there are various techniques to overcome this limitation, but we are developing a new product which uses advanced train shaders to achieve highly detailed rendering on trains. So satellite images are only used for far viewing distances and reference to automatically generate splat maps and detailed textures. Stay tuned to our channel to get notified about this product in the future.